Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, we gonna call this meeting to order, and uh, who's gonna do the roll call? Did somebody do roll call for us? Dr. Oh, that's Dr. right, Doctor Cole. How you doing? Great, sir. Uh, Chief Carl Dunn here. Uh, Miss Connie Kirsch here. Dr. Derek Cole. Miss Ingrid Payne present. Yes, Denise Marcel absent. Miss Mary Washington here. Steve Schilling, Attorney Steve Schilling. Ms. Pamela Mitchell. Here. Councilwoman Carolyn Coleman. Present. Reverend Dr. Mary Moss. Here. Reverend Dr. Hunter Sr. Jacqueline, Attorney Jacqueline Nash. Ms. Jerry Key. Here. Ms. Jerry Booker. Here. Attorney Jennifer Mozak. We have a quorum. Thank you. All right, y'all, uh, apologize for that. I think I skipped two steps. <laughs> so we're going to start off with the invocation. Uh, Dr. Moss, Pastor Moss, you mind giving an invocation, please? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. God, we thank you again for the wonderful privilege of this day. Thank you for the gathering uh, of these, your people, who are gathered to take care of business. We pray now that you would give our meeting meaning as well as purpose to the end that only you get the Lord. Amen. 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 There you go. All right. And I can lead the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Lord. All right. We're going to move to adopt the agenda if we can. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Anybody, uh, any nays? Aye. Thank you. All right. Public comments. Do we have any public comments? All right, number six, action items. A, certification of the Board of Directors meeting from June the 29th, 2023. Can we get a motion to certify the, the meeting minutes from June 29th? I second. I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? No. All right. All right, on action item B, policies and procedures, approval of federalization policy. Um, Chief. Yes. Not Chief, I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, we uh, are introducing a fraternization policy. Um, we have had some, some occurrences, and we just want to make clear uh, and have it in writing to add to our employee manual. Um, in writing that if you, if you are a supervisor, an administrator, a manager, that you cannot have relationship at the company with your subordinates or any subordinates. That's the first thing. The second thing we want to address is we want to we're going to introduce also with this fraternization policy a uh, consensual relationship agreement because what we have um, discovered here lately uh, we got we have some folks dating, engaged. Um, from different departments. We have an employee um, just recently married a senior. And so we just want to make sure. <laughs> now the employee is a senior, right? So, you know, these are adults, right? And so we just want to make sure that we have policy in place. Because, of course, as an administrator, we find out after the fact, y'all coming to the way, what? What? When? <laughs> right? How long you been dating? So. There's, here's a way for them to say, you know, that we're in a consensual relationship. And then if anything happens, because we've had that a couple of, you know, now we ain't together and we beefing at work, right? So we needed, some, we needed some policies to address that, just to make sure that the agency is clear. And so we had a policy in front of you all. Okay. Y'all, we have had a couple of COA marriages, yeah. a couple of COA babies. Mm. Without marriages, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and, uh, and, and, a, and a senior marriage to an employee, yes, sir. Do we have to move? 
Do we need yeah, to we move? need to make a motion. I make a motion that we accept the uh, service. Oh no, fraternization. The policy mm -hmm. on yeah. approval of fraternization policy. Yeah. Second. All right. Moved by Dr. Cole. Second by. Keith. All right. And we have um, all in favor. Aye. All right. We have any nays. All right. So moved. Um, and just for, if I could get a point of yes, personal privilege. Um, we will not have a finance report today. Ms. Pratt has been working uh, telecommuting for the last two weeks. They um, have put her mother on hospice, and so she is there taking care of all of uh, the necessary things that she has to do. So, yeah. Yeah. So you guys, if you don't mind, keep her in your prayers. It's been difficult because she, she had to convert to, you know, caregiving. She a senior herself, so that's a little different. That's a little different than regular caregiving. So we, so we won't have a finance policy mm -hmm. uh, report today, um, and then we're gonna go just straight to uh, chief. Is okay to yes CEO report. Yes, and basically I just wanted to um, make sure that I keep you all up to date and abreast of all the things that we have going on. First and foremost, um, the Lotus Headquarters Nutritional Services. We just finished and completed. Um, what they call a manufacturer's permit. We have a permit to manufacture meals, and if we so deem, we can take our meals and we can put them in Walmart for sale or Target for sale. But on top of that, the reason we got it is because we just want a contract with two entities, Louisiana Leadership Institute. We'll be feeding their after-school program and their Saturday, the Saturday Academy to the amount of about between $84,000 and $100,000 a year. We'll, We'll feed those kids. It's about 40 kids in the evening and about 75 to 100 on Saturdays. We also just um, <clears throat> went into a CEA with the YWCA Early Head Start Food Program. We'll feed two of their locations, and that, um, and that amount is about $256,000. We're going to feed 200 kids a day. Um, early from the ages of one to five. So this has been part of our strategic plan to make sure that as we get close to the end of the millage before it comes up for renewal, that we have some revenue generating um, arms of this company. So not only will we be doing housing, but we're going to be doing selling our meals because it's a, bunch, it's a lot of folks that have reached out to us. And we picked these two in particular. They're small enough for us to start and see if we can you know, grasp it and how well we're going to do. Um, we've been contacted by the charter schools. They, they, look and they asked us if we can make their meals for all the charter schools. So before we jump out into the deep end, we're going to start in the shallow end and see how this goes. And Any so questions? What impact does that have on, on your grant making and grant requests? No. It, does it, have it doesn't. No, no, no. This, um, matter of fact, um, the funds from leadership will come directly from from their budget, the funds from the YWCA comes from the Department of Education uh, Early Head Start um, Child Nutrition Program. So they'll pay us um, directly. And so it won't prevent us from doing <coughs> our meals or, or any of our other funds. It should, it's not going to conflict. All right, and then the second thing we have, that's uh, Lotus Headquarters Nutritional Service. Any questions about that? If not, we're going to move on to Lotus Village. <coughs> I'm going to let Ms. Janice is here. She's going to give us an update on Lotus Village. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I have a brief update. Mm. <laughs> 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 I want you all to know that Lotus Village is now approximately 17% occupied. Oh, right. And yeah. so we are expecting full occupancy by the end of October. So can you give us a hand? Yeah. Uh, but we are excited about uh, Lotus Village. All right, next. They were brief. You want to talk about your, your okay. rental properties? That, that's why I said going to be brief. She didn't give me the, <laughs> the word to go through. <laughs> But uh, what I want to say about Lotus Village, uh, when, I, when I'm speaking of Lotus Village, I want to talk about the community. When uh, Council on Aging invested in this community, it was just not for one property. It was to take a look at this village, and the vision is to not only just renovate, but to make sure that we are looking at neighborhood stabilization, uh, we're looking at uh, community revitalization, 
And in doing that, we are actually working on the acquisition of property and the renovation of properties. What you see here, that's one of three properties that were purchased by uh, the Council on Aging, and we're in the process of renovating these properties. Each of the properties that we purchase, they're, they're lined with and in close proximity with, or even next door to Lotus Village Senior Community. So as you can see that, it all started with the village. And we're moving out from the village and making sure that everything around us uh, is actually decent, safe, sanitary, clean, and affordable for the seniors that we serve. Mm -hmm. uh, and that property is actually located at 645 uh, North 16th Street. And you know the village is right at 16. Uh, we have a village that runs from 15 to 16 to 17th Street and all the way down to uh, from Gracie back to Spanish Town and uh, Gayoso back to um, all the way to North as well. This is another property at um, actually 1549 North Street. Uh, this is actually, so it looks really bad, but this is a typical blighted <laughs> property in the community. But if you walk into this property, even as bad as it looks, it is actually a gym inside. Mm -hmm. You're going to see the the uh, hardwood floors, mm -hmm. you're going to see the fireplaces, and I'm saying fireplaces because there are at least three fireplaces mm -hmm. placed mm -hmm. inside that property. Um, the ceilings, the windows, they all worked, the, uh, worked us having to restore it uh, to the best of our ability and then be able to, to rent those properties for our seniors. And this is another property, 533, located 533 North uh, 17th Street, which is actually directly across from 1701 uh, Main Street, our uh, senior center. So as you can see, each, of the, each time we purchase a property, it is keeping with our strategic plan to make sure that it's in close proximity to the property we own, because we want to make sure that anywhere we're placing our seniors it's going to, uh, these places are going to be decent and safe for them. And that's another, it's a small property, but it's beautiful, beautiful, and it's been well maintained. And we're going to go in and complete the renovation. So again, we can put it on the market so that we can have, I'm saying the market, the rental market, so that we can uh, sell that, rent it to our seniors who are low income. Uh, additionally, mm -hmm. we are, we have plans to acquire two big lots, square 18 and square Neighborhood 20. blocks. And we, yes. re we refer to the lots by the squares because mm -hmm. that's how they are <coughs> listed. Um, but once we acquire the property again, we have square 20, um, Frisco and Gracie directly across from Lotus Village 4. And if you can look to the four to the left, you're going to see Lotus Village 4 that area and the lots are directly across the street, across the street mm -hmm. that we want to continue to build upon this area. We don't want to leave any vacant lots uh, because you can see how the grass is overgrown. And once the grass is overgrown, one of the things we fight uh, each month Dumping. is trying to pick up the trash mm -hmm. because people use it as a dumping site. And we don't want the trash there, the, the trash of, and the rodents and everything else that comes with it, particularly since we've got people now living in Lotus Village. And what you're looking at is look, the side of Lotus Village 1, right there on Gracie Street. So we're excited that uh, we're moving uh, forward to buy that property. Um, uh oh. <coughs> okay. Lotus That's Village it. at the Lakes. We've been talking about it. Uh, he's mentioning Lotus Village at the Lakes. Mm -hmm. Where is Lotus Village at the Lakes, folks? Okay. Baker. Baker. What's y'all now? That's what I'm talking about. Come on home, y'all. Now we coming home. Yes. So if for a moment you want to travel with me to Baker, I want to share with, with Chief and each of you where we are with, with this project. Uh, it's going to be one of the most exciting projects that we've done. If you think Lotus Village is exciting, just wait till you see Lotus Village at the lake. Now, this is a, a schematic plan or the site plan that was just developed and we met with the, the architects and they say, hold up, wait a minute. I want to take it a step further. I want to jump out of the box. I want to do something different. Say, okay, what is it that you can do different? She says, I want cottages. 
I don't want property so close. And even though we talked about having at least 60 units, you said, ah, let's see if we can reduce it down to 40 uh, units and put more space, but have individual cottages so that it can really uh, keep in, um, it can be uh, consistent with the homes in the area mm -hmm. because it is a residential neighborhood right. and uh, we, can keep, can, we can be consistent with Lotus Village with our concept idea about the village. This is a wonderful piece of property. As you can see that blue area, we do have a lake, lake. Mm -hmm. in that area so we will be able to, to allow uh, our Fish. seniors to go fishing mm -hmm. if they so desire. It's close with the Breck property so that we're, we're talking uh, about working with them to see we can even develop a walking trail in the area. And if you look to your far right, that little, that little white piece there that looks like a crown, that is our crown jewel that's going to be our senior center. Mm -hmm. And so you can see the senior center is on the property. Sure. We're going to have the property subdivided so that we'll have the Lotus Center right next to the senior uh, community. And so that is going to be where we're going to start first, Chief. We're going to work with the senior center. Uh, we're going to establish it, and, and we are now working with the architects, finalizing all the plans. So it's a 15,000 square foot building with t two floors. The second floor will have some offices and some storage spaces, but we'll also have a fitness center, a pantry, a food pantry like we have here. It'll be, it'll have a larger, footprint so we can service people in that area. We'll have a big meeting space, classroom, a yoga classroom, um, and then uh, we are trying to finagle some space to put a swimming pool in the area because this is going to be a gated community in order to come to the senior centers. Just like here, you'll come through the gate. Um, and so we already have the money in the bank to do uh, the senior center, so we're going to start with that. Senior center estimates between 3.1 and $4 million. Um, our great senator, Senator Barrow, gave us 7.2 in this. in this priority, in priority one. So it's sitting there ready to go. She also gave us $1 million um, in general funds last year in 2022 to do all of the getting the property together, getting it cleaned off, building up the land because it sits kind of low in the front at Plank. So we're going to do some build up. So we already have. Uh, approval from was it Office of Facility and Planning from the state, and we're good to go. We've got our notice to proceed. It was August 22nd, so the first thing now we're going to finalize our schematic drawing, turn those in, and we're going to get started on demo and construction. This project is slated to be done uh, August 2025. 14 months. It's a 14 month project. Once we get started, there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We right now we lease it from Breck, but we, that one. We lease know. from the city. city. Your city, okay. And we've outgrown it. It's really tight in there. And Ms. Davlin does a great job with the little um, space she has, but it's too tight. And, and the mayor yeah, knows, yeah. so mm -hmm. he's going to help us with some uh, infrastructure here so we can kind of keep the cost down mm -hmm. on the senior center. Um, and then we have <coughs> another, uh, in priority five, we have another $7.2 million headed toward the project. The project for the housing has been estimated at about 15 million. And so we're going to go back to our great senator and ask her to give us another seven. Because <laughs> we want to build this without LATEC money, without um, Louisiana housing um, rules and regulations. We want to be able to build this ourselves. And that way we set the rents. It, it doesn't matter about income. And, and we can kind of have a, a better control of what kind of seniors and how we can help seniors that are below the 70% poverty guideline that can only pay two or $300 a month. So we'll be able to, to balance, you know, the, the housing footprint in, in, this, in this area. Yep, so that's Lotus Village at the Lake. I'm sorry, Janice, I just jumped in. No, we're going to give you some, um, we've been talking to the, ex, um, to the architects, so we're going to give you just some inspiration pictures of what we, we're, how we're deciding we're going to do these. These are going to be what they call micro homes or mini homes one to two, maybe three bedrooms with a high pitch ceiling so that if you have an aide or a family member, they stay up in the loft area. Um, well, yes, we have a loft. Um, and so we're just kind of tweaking how we want them to sit, but we want the buildings 
separate and apart so you can feel like you're living in a house, right? And so these are gonna be um, almost like tiny houses, but a little bigger, anywhere from 700 square foot, depending on if it's a one bedroom, to 1,200, um, depending on the size of the piece of the land. So we'll have four or five different models, right? But they all have a porch, outdoor sitting area, and then the neighborhood, these are also gonna be eco-friendly and green. So they're gonna, have, they're gonna operate by solar. We're gonna, we're gonna build them um, to the highest standard. We, we're gonna make sure that we, just like back here, we can be fortified silver with no flooding, no wind, all of those things. And so we're gonna build these to last, to stand the test of time. Yeah, and Baker, we're gonna have to. Yeah. Go ahead, James. I, I, I just want to say one thing for those of you when Ms. Zimmer mentioned tiny, tiny homes, because you probably heard a lot about tiny homes. Yeah. Uh, no, not, not tiny homes because there's. No, they're, they're they call mini homes. Tiny homes. Yes. Yeah. Small or mini, mini homes. homes. And the difference yeah. is that the tiny homes, they have a wheel underneath. These built on. Uh, almost like a trailer. Mm -hmm. They have wheels. So, we and I know no those foundation. of you who, who knew that about tiny homes, we just <laughs> want to make sure that you knew, we knew too. <laughs> 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 That's right. We're gonna build these on, on slab foundations, so they won't be rolling anywhere. We don't want it. You can't get up, get up, and we wake up in the morning, the house gone. We yeah. won't. <laughs> everybody on the premises. That's right. All right. You wanna go Thank next? You. Is that it? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, when we were talking about the the neighborhood revitalization and and like removal programs out in this area, I, I failed to mention, and I apologize. Uh, for not mentioning, we were awarded $1.5 million uh, by the Capital Outlay, uh, the Capital Outlay Act. Representative we have Marcel. priority one, 500000 that can be used immediately, and $1 million that will be used as a priority five. Mm -hmm. And at this point, what we're working on is to make sure that anything in priority five, which is of course a million dollars and the 7.1, it has to go before the, board, the bond commission because what they will do is actually approve the line of credit for mm -hmm. us. And so the bond commission meets every third Thursday. And so we're hoping and anticipating those items to be on the agenda so that they can be approved and we can move forward. So we're in good shape, folks, and we're feeling good about what we're doing. So, about thank you. OK, thank you, Ms. Janice. And any questions? Um, Okay, if not, then we're going to just go um, just to some things that we have coming up. We do have, uh, as we mentioned in the past, we do have three reimbursable grants from the department, uh, from DHH. One of them is, one, of course, to continue um, doing booster clinics, educating our seniors. And so we will have a booster clinic at the Lotus Center on the 27th. And the reason we're going to have it on the 27th, there is a new booster that's coming out um, the, the week before. And this is the one that we'll, you will get annually, right? And it, they are suggesting that you take your booster and your flu shot at the same time. And so at this clinic, we're gonna offer booster flu. We're also gonna offer shingles. We're also gonna offer shots to children for, with RSV, so right? I can wait and do my do, wait and do it on the, oh, at the oh, same time. Oh, yeah. No, except the, don't get the shingles. Now you can't get the shingles. Well, that's a bit much. But you can get the booster and the flu at the same time, and that will take you till next year. What do you mean you can't get the shingles? You can't get the shingles. They don't suggest you get all three in one day. No, but if I get my flu shot COVID, I can get the shingles. That day, yes. That day. That day. Cause mm -hmm. I, to be honest, shingles are very expensive. If you get them at the doctor's office, yeah. the copay is high. Oh, yeah. If you go to Walgreens or Walmart, it's cheaper. Right. And so my thing is, if I come to your home, Yeah, you can free. get them. It'll be free. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be free to your pocket. Now, if you have, like, Medicare or you have uh, one of those, uh, what is it, part? Advantage. Advantage plans, like... Um, Humanigold. Humanigold, people, people sell. sell. Then they're going to charge them. It's still free to you. You're not going to pay, but yeah. Right. Uh, and if you yeah, have... I paid enough to United. Mm -hmm. Now we on United Health. Mm -hmm. But that's going to take care of it. The Part D yeah. coverage should I take care of it. Else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they go. Uh, so, I can get 
Yeah, yeah. they'll yeah. they'll schedule. Um, the pharmacist will tell us, and we'll schedule okay. the second shot. Um, but this is open to not just seniors, to just everybody, because um, as you know, COVID is still among us. It's back, back. Yeah. I see. It's back a a activated. Matter of fact, they said there's more people <coughs> going to the emergency room now as it relates to COVID than before. So we got to be um, diligent and vigilant, make sure we're doing all the things we're supposed to do. And some of it can be resolved. It's, it's the simple stuff of washing your hands and staying a certain distance from folk, especially if you have some uh, underlying medical conditions, right? Nasha, mm -hmm. um, my intern suggested that um, individuals with grandchildren might even consider the RSV themselves. Yes, yeah. right, right. Hmm. Right, because uh, that's uh, attacking kids and, and older people, so and seniors. So you're right. If you're raising grandchildren and they're going to school and they're exposed and exposed to others, there's potential to get it. And I understand it. It's about as bad as COVID. So on your body. Um, and so then we have another clinic. We have a booth for the booster clinic, and that's for the senior centers on for um, Halloween. We, you know, we don't want to go trick or treat, so we're gonna take shots. <laughs> <laughs> in the senior centers they'll get their um they'll get their shots and and we go around and we make it like trick-or-treat and you get your little fruit and whatever and you come on in line and get your shot right <laughs> that's gonna be at the lotus center, the lotus center as well because mm -hmm. right now that's the largest place we have where we can hold that many people in and out mm -hmm. all day and you know we have the officers there to to direct the traffic and, you make appointments. and we go make appointments we're going to send out the links and we'll make sure that truly sends it to you all if you want to get in, you can just uh, make your appointment online. Uh, Albertsons will be doing the inoculations for the first booster clinic, and then Care South will do um, the clinic in October. All right, and then we have Thanksgiving dinner and dance. We'll be at every location. You know, I thought we would probably pull it together, but now that COVID is back high again, we're going to do it at the individual senior centers. And some centers like that, and some don't. Some centers just like to be with themselves, and that's good for Thanksgiving. They sit down, eat the turkey, because they come in with their own little side dishes, you know, from the ones who could cook. So they're gonna, we're going to do, uh, at, the, at your individual senior centers, we will do Thanksgiving. And I think we got a short, we got a short agenda today. Mm -hmm. that, she said, praise the Lord. That's it, Jesus. That's it for me. That's it. Jordan. All right, yeah, we that's have it. any unfinished uh, business, any unfinished business. Y'all know why we short today because Miss Pratt not here. In a new shopping. business. In a new business. In a new business. All right. Well, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All right. All right. We got out of here now. How about that? Sure did. One out. One out.